Police have taken action at Parliament this morning, delivering large concrete blocks to block in the vehicles of anti-mandate protesters. Take a look at these shots. Uh, these were aerial shots taken over the weekend. This is why. It's basically because there are so many people, there are thousands there at the weekend, 800 vehicles in the vicinity of Parliament. This thing has grown, and look at that, grown and grown and grown. It comes as the police commissioner admits the protests, quote, shouldn't have got to this, and protesters claiming the government's dug itself a hole by refusing to meet them. Joining me now is the Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Prime Minister, good morning. Um, first of all, what was the purpose of this morning's um, operation? I'm assuming to try and block the cars in or stop more coming. Uh, what I've been advised from the police is that, as you've described this morning, they have put in place... Uh, barricades and they are also uh, have staff that are uh, stationed at each of those sites, predominantly at those intersections or areas where cars are already up to the edge of. And the intent, I'm told, is to ensure that they don't see any further growth and any further disruption. And the disruption is being obvious. I mean, I, I can't see the aerial photographs, but I can certainly see from uh, the building and place where I work, the disruption has been enormous to businesses. There are schools within the location of the protest, and students are now being escorted to school um, because of the intimidation and harassment. Uh, and I think ultimately, Ryan, the point I would make is that all of this would be resolved if protesters accept that they have made their point and it is now time to go home. Yeah, except they don't feel like they're being listened to, um, which will come to in a minute. But just on the Wellingtonians being fed up, um, a lot of them are angry and they're angry at the police. Do you have confidence and trust in Andrew Costa and his handling of this crisis? I do have confidence in the police and uh, I have Andrew uh, Costa? confidence in the commissioner. Um, but what I would also say is, you know, they do a very hard job. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll know that I'm the daughter of a police a police officer. You know, I consider myself to be a member of the police family for a number of years. Um, so I do absolutely support them and the work that they do. Do I always agree with every single operational decision that they make? Not necessarily, but this they one, have my support. You don't agree with the operational decisions in this case from the get-go? I'm not, I have not said that though, Ryan. The point is that there will be times when I won't always necessarily agree, but they have my absolute support and that won't change. So you have confidence in the Commissioner, but you seem to be expressing you don't have confidence in his handling of this particular protest. No, I think I've just said what I exactly uh, what I mean. You know, taken as a whole, of course there'll be from time to time there may be decisions that I don't always agree with is this or one of necessarily them? Under, fully understand. They are the ones that are equipped to make these operational decisions. And Ryan, I'm very clear in the distinction that exists between the government and the police. They have to be able to make their own decisions we do not have the power, the right or the legal ability to ever instruct the police on operational decision making. No. And that's a very important convention that I will absolutely. absolutely not see disrupted. But that does not change the fact that I've lived closely enough with the police over many years to know how tough their job is. So they have my support, you know, particularly those police who are standing oh, out there on the front line right now doing absolutely. a very difficult job. Yeah, absolutely. They have Every single one of them has our support here in the studio as well, Prime Minister. Um, all right, let's talk about yeah. the mandates. Have you asked for advice on removing the vaccine mandates? Well, of course, as I've already said, um, uh, Ryan, they are uh, one of the many restrictions that are not forever. And I've been saying that for some time. You will already have seen the proof that we are moving away from things like lockdowns. We've changed isolation periods. We're opening our borders. As it is safe to do so, we will move away from those measures. Now, I will talk a little bit more about some of our wider public health restrictions to address questions that New Zealanders have. And I'll do a little bit more of that this afternoon. But yeah, the point that I, I would make is that all of those measures right now have the broad support of most New Zealanders because we are right at the front end of a peak, not coming off it. So this is not the time to pull off all of our armour right when the enemies arrived on the doorstep. Um, so just coming back to the question, Prime Minister, have you asked for any advice on removing vaccine mandates? 
Well, my point is, Ryan, that we constantly discuss every single layer of protection we have. So and it's that, a constant a yes? discussion because we don't want any restrictions to stay in longer than they're needed. Um, but again, what we're very clear on, and you'll see from the experts who have already been in the media discussing issues like mandates, is that it is not the time now, as we're reaching, you know, moving through what will be eventually a peak, now is not the time to remove them. But for what the future looks like, um, I am going to talk a little bit more about that this afternoon. OK. So I'm assuming from your answer that you have asked for some advice on removing the vaccine mandates. When did, when did you ask... No, my answer is exactly as I've said it. I get advice constantly and I debate constantly okay. every restriction. All right. so, okay, because so you would expect that. Let's go with that, Prime Minister. So you get advice constantly, which means in the last week you would have had advice on the vaccine mandates. So can we just clarify, because I think we need to justify them to the people who are there at Parliament at the moment. Yeah. How many, if we remove yeah. the vaccine mandates on, say, a barista or a restaurant worker, how many extra cases of COVID would we see and how many extra hospitalisations? So you'll forgive me if I speak, I'll speak a little bit about where the mandates apply and then I'll come to the question of why, why then are they important. So the primary mandates that we've, that we've had have been uh, in those areas where we work with vulnerable people, healthcare, education, Defence Force and Police and our border workers. And of course, everyone remembers and understands why that was so important in Delta. Then, if you're a business that is opting to use the vaccine pass, because remember, most hospitality businesses have the choice to operate without it, particularly at Orange. At Red, it's a bit harder. You have to be contactless, but there are some choices there. The mandates, the role that they play, firstly, that there is, of course, with vaccines, a reduction in transmission as a result of being vaccinated, so your ability to pass it on. Now, with Omicron, it's, little, it's less than it was for Delta, but still some studies suggest about a 50% reduction. Now, if you're working with vulnerable people, that is important, and it's important overall for an outbreak. The second reason mandates have been important is we still do have Delta in New Zealand. In fact, we're still seeing uh, caseload in hospitals of Delta cases. So I think we need to remember we're not just dealing with just the, the more what has mostly will be a mild to moderate illness for most New Zealanders. And the third reason, again, is just its significant reduction of hospitalisations. You're 10 times less likely to end up in hospital as a result of being mm. vaccinated. And so we want to make sure we don't overwhelm our hospitals and our health care. So those are some of the primary totally. reasons why now, right when we're taking off, is not the time to remove those things. But in the future, there is the possibility, yeah. absolutely, yeah, there's no to doubt move away that from they, them. No I've that very that, clearly. Yeah, there's no doubt they've been, they've been useful and the public has backed them to this point. Just coming back yes. to the question, though, um, how many extra hospitalisations would we see if we were to lift those mandates? Oh, look, Ryan, I don't, I don't know that any modeller has taken a single intervention and done that modelling. What so, they have so done is taken a suite of public health Prime measures. Prime Minister, this is the problem you've got, isn't it? That you've got a because bunch of protesters on, on Parliament's lawn at the moment. that I've just demonstrated to you, Ryan. Sorry, sorry, Prime Minister, I'll just finish the question. There are You're a whole asking bunch me of... to demonstrate what one individual being vaccinated will make a difference in a, in a pandemic, and I don't know that that's a reasonable question. But if we know that you get roughly, on some studies, particularly out of Denmark, a 50% reduction in transmission then that makes a difference, particularly when you have large case numbers. OK. Um, just finally, before we go, uh, the Prime Minister, you said last week about the protesters... Uh, there was lots of talk about the protesters, and the language is what I want to focus on, just, just briefly. Um, you know, these protests, albeit there are ugly elements of them, but there are also some of our most vulnerable Fano and tamariki there as well, protests that have grown in size. Do you think helping the cause of trying to shut them down uh, using language like river of filth and ferals. Do you think that's helped the issue? That is not being my language. No, you're the senior minister's. Um, but what I said... But again, what I have been very clear on is that, you know, what we've seen outside 
has moved from a protest into a legal activity. And I think we can all agree on that. The point has been made and it is time to go home. There are children out there. So that's and I'm working. deeply uncomfortable about that. They've been there for weeks. It is not an environment for kids. It is time to go home. Uh, and again, I will keep speaking to every New Zealander. The vast majority would understand that with 2,500 cases yesterday, we do have a rough few weeks ahead of us. We need to get through that. But there's also light. And we will keep changing yeah. and easing the protections that have kept us all so safe. And we shouldn't forget, Ryan, you know, our response has saved so many lives. And that has been at the core of what we've been trying to do. And there will be people who won't agree with that. But ultimately, you know, I think we can acknowledge that those decisions have saved possibly the lives of people they may even know. Just very quickly, coming back to the question, Prime Minister, do you condone the ferals and the river of filth comments by your senior ministers. I don't condone the illegal activity outside. What about your ministers? Has Again, that... Ryan, without going into... I'm not going to delve into the context of the comments that other people have made. I am going to own every You're word okay that I them, share though. and make. It is illegal. It needs to be moved on. We need to move on from this period right now and get on and focusing on the pandemic that is in front of all of us. All right. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, as always, we thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you so much for coming on.